Hey all, Tony Bing here. Hello and welcome to my Just a Phase endgame build for Kitty Pride for Marvel Heroes Omega for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, as the name suggests, this build is based heavy around the phasing side of things, which is a whole heap of fun, and we also throw in some sword skills in there as well just to make it look even more awesome. Now, in this video, we will cover the skills and talents we use, we'll have a look at the optimal synergies. We'll check out the infinity point allocation and that's where we would place the first 100 points. We'll have a look at a general gear and priority for the build and then we finish up with a, an operation, a full bounty clear and we take down a boss at the end as well there. Now as always there are timestamps within the description of the video for the sections that I've just mentioned so if you want to jump to any of them feel free. Otherwise we'll start off by looking at the skills. For the skills here we're making use of our sword and phasing skills which really are a ton of fun. Now the main filler we're using is Discipline Strike and this should have the movement power tag because it operates exactly the same as the mirror version of the skill but it's changed through talents. So that's something that will be fixed in time so just do bear that in mind for this build that it will have the movement tag meaning when we get to the gearing section then it will gain the critical hit rating from the Axe Legendary that we will be using. It will also restore Lockheed Energy, but it's not really relevant to the build setup, we've got to be honest. Now, the first cooldown skill we have is Watch Your Step, so this provides vulnerability. You're invulnerable while you cast it, and it does a nice amount of damage as well. We then have Phasing Samurai. Again, you're invulnerable while casting this. It does a, a really nice amount of damage, this one, actually. It's got a 8 second cooldown, so it lines up with the previous skill, and it gives you a buff to your melee power damage. Now we follow that up with Shadow and Flame, so this is really good, we've got it through talents that it will do additional damage so it can hit for a lot this particular skill and again you see it's got the 8 second cooldown there. Now we look at skills that we can use on a more regular cooldown and they would be the first one is Logan style, it will always critically hit, it works as an execute 4 second cooldown. And then we have Heartbreaker, which is almost the same. It always critically hits, works as an execute, and again, it's got a 4 second cooldown, but this one has got a 1 second stun on it. Now, the way you want to work this rotation is you work through your 8 second skills, so we've got 3 of them. Once you get to Logan Style and Heartbreaker, and you hold down L2, and you actually go through a rotation of these twice, and then once you've done that, you go back to your main buttons, and you start your 8 second rotation once again. Or, if you want to be lazy, you can just line them all up for 8 seconds, but if you want to get the most out of the build, that's the setup you want to use. The final skill we look at anyway is Phased Out, and we've got this buff through talent, so it does 6 hits. So overall, it really can hit for a whopping amount, and again, you're invulnerable while using it, which is fantastic. But for the next section, we'll have a look at the talents. For the first talent, we have Solo Training. So with this, you send Lockheed away, and you prevent the use of Lockheed powers except Shadow and the Flame, and that's one we will be using. With this, it consumes all Lockheed energy, damage is increased by 0.3% per point spent, and its buff effect now applies to all powers, so it really can hit for a huge amount. And it's also got an 8 second cooldown, so it lines up great with our other skills. Next up we have Constant Ambush, so Discipline Strike, which is your main sword filler, gains the following effects. You phase through your target and reappear behind them, causing your next hit to deal 100% additional damage, and it critically hits as well, and you also gain a 5% dodge chance. So when we look at our legendary, which will be the axe, I've already spoiled that, this can work great, because the axe has the brutal strike rating on it, so that can work great with any skills that critically hit and we actually have three of them with this setup. But next talent is Brutal Combat, so Heartbreaker deals 1% more damage per 1% of target's health missing, and Logan style always critically hits. So essentially, it makes these skills both executes and both 100% critical hits, which is really fantastic. The next talent is Sword Wielder, so you gain a 5% sword power critical hit chance, sword power damage goes up by 5%, and your old filler martial arts combo transformed into discipline strike which looks fantastic as well we're not making use of the actual shadow cats pirouette portion of this but it's still worthwhile taking uh, as i did mention earlier though 
doesn't have the movement tag at the moment so until that is fixed if you want to make the most of the setup I would use phase rush instead and that would mean that your filler will stay martial arts combo which does have the movement tag so just bear that in mind there final talent we look at anyway is continuous assault so with this your signature phased out which normally hits as a huge amount as it is actually lasts longer and you get six hits as opposed to four so that's a nice increase in damage on it but for the next section we'll have a look at the synergies with the synergies we start off by looking at the primary attributes and that's fighting and intelligence that's covered by beast electra and war machine your more generic synergies that work great on them are blade hawkeye hulk she hulk and squirrel girl and finally specific ones that work very nice on them would be daredevil and also nightcrawler as well but for the next section we will look at the infinity point allocation and this is where we would place the first 100 points. So with this build a whole lot of the fun comes from the fact that she can phase through walls and she can teleport all over the screen really. So for that reason I like to use a time gem and temporal loophole. It gives her the increased movement speed which feels great on her but it gives her the increased attack speed which makes her sword attacks feel even more fluid which really is great. But for the next section we'll have a look at the general gear and priority. As always then with this gearing section I'll give a rough outline of how I would actually gear for this particular build and that means in future as new items come out you can use the hints and tips here to help you decide if you want to move around your gear. Now the Savvy Jacks of Ares actually works fantastic on her. You've got the damage rating to melee powers which is all her powers. You have the 1500 critical hit rating to movement powers. Now we have a few powers that don't have the movement tag but 2 out of the 4 powers that don't have the movement tag have a 100% chance to critically hit so it makes up for the fact that we don't have the critical hit rating on the melee only skills we then have the brutal damage rating which is fantastic and also the brutal strike rating and that works great with our 2 main skills that have a 100% chance to crit and also our filler which has that chance to do a 100% critical hit every two seconds as well it really does work fantastic on this legendary we look at the medallion as we're a purely melee build you want to go for the dr octopus medallion same when it comes to the relic you're going for the relic of asgard because it buffs our melee skills catalyst there's nothing in particular you really want to go for potentially health on hit because you're a melee build but she's not really desperately in need of any particular affixes artifacts none really shine too much on her so for that reason Go for more generic ones like the Gem of the Karst or Crossbones Teaching Credentials or try and go for ones that have fighting or intelligence on them. For our slots 1 to 5 and our ring affixes, because we have a nice amount of critical hit rating, guaranteed critical hits and also brutal strike, you want to go for roughly probably about a 33% mix of attributes for damage and it's up to you if you go for fighting or intelligence. Intelligence maybe a bit better due to your guaranteed critical hits and then you want to also go for your critical hit rating and your brutal strike rating as well there's so a mix of all three of them really don't prioritize one over any of them now that the gearing's covered anyway what we'll do to finish off is show off some gameplay of her awesome skills as she's phasing all over the screen so we've got a run through of the sinister's lab full bounty clear as always I will mention that this isn't to show off how she plays in best in slot gear because I don't have that on her as you can see at the moment it's purely to show off how the rotation works. But as always I hope this video was useful, enjoy this upcoming gameplay, if there's any questions feel free to ask and I'll see you all again soon.